Hi everybody, I'm the SOLIDWORKS nerd, and today we're going to be talking about part two of the CSWP. So part two is where you test out your part modification skills and your configuration abilities. So it can feel that you're under a time crunch, so I thought what perfect model would be but the ba -bomb. So here I have a model. It's been built with a number of features, some regular features, others surfacing. And I'm going to talk about, one, how to uh, modify this and in what ways and what options we have available to us. And number two, how to deal with configurations. All right, so let's talk about some of our, our, our changes. So here's our little bum bum guy. So one of the changes we're going to do is that you see how his... Uh, fuse here has three strands cut out of it. We want to turn that into four. And another change that we're going to do is I'm going to completely remove the right half of his key here. I want to leave the stub behind, but I want to remove this key. So let's focus on that for right now. So as far as getting four of these strands in here, there's only really there's really only one way to do it, and that's uh, heading back into the history and uh, doing an edit just like you would normally. So there's two main ways to perform an edit um, on a part. So one, you can go back to the past and uh, edit features that are already there, or two, you can take a more future oriented approach and use direct editing tools. Um, both have their advantages and disadvantages. So the normal way you would do this is, you know, you would go back to the past and you would edit a feature that you already have. So that's what we're going to do here just to start off. So this feature is controlled. I can actually click and use my cross highlighting by this circular pattern one. And now if you are, have trouble visualizing uh, what uh, what your changes do to the model, I would recommend rolling all the way back here just to see what the model looks like at this state. So if I right click and hit roll back, that's how the fuse looks like. Looks like it was straight and then there was this flex feature applied to uh, bend the fuse. So this change is pretty simple. We can go ed edit this feature, change the number from three to four, and you can see, all right, looks pretty good, but let's see what the flex feature has to say about this. So it's thinking a little bit, which is to be expected of flex. Flex, flex is a pretty uh, uh, computationally expensive feature. And then let's roll to end just to see our result thus far. All right, so that's the first method. We um, went back to the past and edited a feature that was already there. So what about direct editing? So direct editing, I'm going to right click one of my tabs and well, activate the direct editing tab. There are features that directly affect the geometry. So instead of editing a feature that uh, results in geometry, we go straight to the geometry and then we could say, oh, let me move this face over here, or let me delete this face, or let me replace this face and replace it with something else. So when might it be advantageous to do that? So um, it can save a lot of time, which is definitely important during the a certified SOLIDWORKS professional when you're working against the clock. Um, so why wouldn't, I, why wouldn't I recommend this for everyday use? Well, the thing is, it makes things a little bit more confusing. So if you work with a group of people, you know, having a bunch of direct editing features can be very confusing and make, can make your work very difficult to pick up. But let's take a look at our challenge here. So I want to remove this key and leave this stub. He's gonna lose, poor little Bob's gonna lose his key. 
So you might be thinking, well, that's simple. I'm just going to click, cross highlight, and it looks like it's taken care of with this boss extrude. I'm just going to go ahead and suppress that, right? Wrong. The whole stub goes away too. And the reason that is the case, so let me hit Control Z, let's undo that, is um, because of parent-child relationships. So what are these parent-child relationships? So we got to remember SOLIDWORKS is a history-based modeler. And so um, different features will depend on other features. So um, if you have SOLIDWORKS 2015 or above, we can easily visualize this with a little trick here. So if I turn this on, so I right click the top of the tree and turn on dynamic Refer reference visualization and there's two buttons for the parent and for the child and I'm going to turn both of those on. So this is the feature that is the key and now you can see that there's little arrows stemming out of it. So the purple arrows uh, point to its children. So basically it's saying that Revolve 2 and Revolve Fillet uh, and Fillet depend on Boss Extrude being, uh, uh, being there, which is problematic because Revolve 2 is what we want to keep and Boss Extrude is what we want to get rid of. And this is telling us that Revolve 2 can't exist without Boss Extrude. So, you know, a good, a good attempt would be, all right, so let's reorder it, right? So if we click and drag, you see we get this little no symbol, and it's just like those cheesy time travel movies. The child can't exist before the parent. So what are we to do? So we could go and edit the sketch and uh, make sure we get rid of all the relations that link this uh, link this stub to the key. So this would be one, but there might be more relations and that could take a lot of time. And, you know, you want to save that time, especially in the context of a certification exam. So that's where our direct editing tools can come in handy. So let's see what our direct editing tool is. So let's do delete face. So delete face, um, uh, does what the name implies. If I click any face, so let's just take this one for example and hit OK. Well, it just removes that face and turns it into a perfectly hollow surface model. So you, you can see I'm looking into the ba -bomb right now. Uh, but, whoops, that's not the feature I want. But, there's also other modes. So if I do this delete and patch, Let's check out what it does. So let's let's try it out up here first. So if I delete this, um, it'll get rid of this curved face here, but it'll patch it up with other geometry. And that other geometry is the surfaces that are surrounding it. So when you have it in delete and patch, it does not create any new surfaces. It just extends the ones that are already there. So what happens is this. It turns that fillet into a perfectly sharp corner. It deletes it and then fills it with surrounding surface. So this is super powerful. If we look at what we have here, if we can select all of these faces to delete, you know, we have all of this cylinder face to patch this hole and this spherical face to patch well the rest of the hole. So I think we have enough uh, information for delete and patch to work. Now the problem is selecting all of these faces. And now that can be that can be a chore. You know, that's taking a lot of time in a context that we don't really want. But take notice that the faces that we want to delete are actually all tangent with each other. They all they all have these fillets and all smoothly connect with each other. Well, when you have the delete face tool active, we can actually right click and select tangency. And that's how we have everything selected. And again, just to study how this is working, let's just set it to delete. So when it removes all, its, all the faces, that's all we get. 
And then with delete and patch, it'll just patch it with surrounding geometry. There, like, like the key never even happened. The surgery was successful. So that's the two main ways of doing uh, part editing. So there are some ways that, you know, going back and editing the history is the way to go. And then there's other ones where using delete face or another direct editing tool will definitely be faster. But there's others that can go both ways. Like for example, if I wanted to change this uh, fill it into a, um, a chamfer, you know, I, I could go back and edit this, and I believe there's, yeah, I think there's a new 2018 feature where you can change fillets into chamfers. And just like that, we'll have our change. And if both are of a similar work to do, I would go with editing the history because it's always a lot easier to tell pretty much. But it could have also, you know, just like we demonstrated, delete face, delete and patch, and then apply something new, maybe a chamfer of a different size. Okay, so we have that chamfer. And that's really the basics of uh, part editing. So now I want to go to our second part, which is going to be about dealing with configurations. And now, uh, what they'll give you on the exam is going to be a part, and it's going to have configurations on it. And if we look at our babam, we actually have configurations on this guy too. So we have this black configuration, we have this blue configuration. Oh, but the blue one actually has a mustache. So let's say that the question is, we need to find out which configurations have a mustache, pretty much. And you can see there are quite a few, and it kind of takes a long time for me to check. So blue has it, pink has it. What about yellow? You can see this is taking kind of a long time, so yellow doesn't have it. So let's see if there's a better way. So just to help us out, let's go back to a configuration that does have a mustache. And if we click on one of the mustaches, we can see that here's one of the features that are involved in creation of the mustache. So we're basically looking for the configuration in which at least the surface loft is uh, suppressed. So an easy way to do that is that we can actually right click the feature and we can uh, configure feature. And what this does is that it actually um, brings up this table and you know, easily in a list format, you can, you know, see which uh, configurations it's suppressed. So now we can easily ask our question, which ones have the mustache? So remember, the ones that have the mustache is the one in which this feature is unsuppressed. So we're looking for the, uh, the boxes where that, that doesn't have a tick. So the um, configurations that have a mustache are blue, you know, makes sense because we're looking at it, blue, pink, green, and red. So purple, yellow, and black do not have mustaches because they have that feature suppressed. So this tool is awesome for looking at information like that. But not only that, um, I can use this to uh, toggle uh, what feature I want suppressed. So it's very a, a very quick way to edit your configurations. So there's, so there's that. So now we, we answered our questions, blue, pink, green, and red. And we can even check for ourselves, you know, yep, that has a mustache, that has a mustache. But the hope is that we won't have to do that during the exam. I'm just doing it just for uh, uh, learning purposes for the purpose of this video. And there's just one more configuration thing I want to show you. And it's a, it's a simple thing that a lot of people trip over. So let's say that another change that we have to do is, uh, let's say that for this cylinder on top, we need this to be, um, let's say, 12 inches on yellow, green, red, and purple. Let's keep it simple, just leave it the last half, and 10 inches on the others. So here's what we can do. First, let's get into one of the configurations that we want the change to occur in. So, Yellow is one of them, 
And now I'm going to make the change and make sure that they apply to uh, the ones that I want. So, you know, my feature tree is pretty long. So remember, you can click and find out which feature is involved. So now let's go ahead and edit the sketch because that's actually what defines the diameter of the cylinder. So we can double click to edit. And here's the thing that people forget. If I make the change right now to 12, it'll actually uh, change all of the configurations to 12 inches. It's a global change, and that's not what we want. So in order to get this just the way we want, we need to look at this little box over here. So you can see that there's you know a little branch with cubes on it, and that actually tells SOLIDWORKS how on what configurations to make the change. So if I hit this down arrow, you can see that if I only if I want to make a configuration to only this configuration, I can switch it like that. But I have a couple of configurations I want to apply this to. So I'm actually going to do specify configurations. And now here we can select all the configurations in which to make the change to. So I'm going to change, select the last four here and hit OK. And keep in mind that you can't deselect the configuration you're on. That's why I got into the yellow configuration in the first place. Hit OK and make my change to 12. I can rebuild and exit my sketch. And it may take a second to rebuild here. You know, my tree was a little bit long and I have fun little features like flex and sweeps and other kind of computationally expensive features. And there we go. So now we should find, let me hide this away, that if I go to the black, this should shrink a little because this is one of the ones with the 10 inch configuration. So it's calculating it right now. Yep, and it's small. And if I go to, say, the purple configuration, we should see it get uh, a little bit larger again. And, yep, there we go. Well, I hope you found this helpful. The part file will be available in the description, and you have a good day. See you next time.